Let's take a look at Avengers Endgame and the quality delivered by a handful of different streaming services. So in this comparison video, we're going to take a look at Avengers Endgame streaming on my Apple TV 4K latest version to my 83 inch LG G2. We're going to compare the streaming bit rates using the developer debug mode UI overlay that tells you all of the, the technical details of what is being served to you and what's being sent through your stream. We're going to take a look at the movie playing on iTunes, Amazon Prime, uh, Movies Anywhere, and Disney Plus. See what we get, see how they compare, and crown crown a winner. Take a look on the channel for some other of these comparison videos as well. Takes a look at the same film, streaming through different services, trying to see who's giving us the best quality based on bit rates, based on the technicals of, of what is being sent. All right, so here we go. We're at the beginning of the film, Avengers Endgame, iTunes. We're getting QHD1 video codec, Dolby Vision, QEC 316 channels. That means Dolby Atmos is being sent down. The normal audio bit rate of Dolby Atmos, as we see in a lot of these streaming services, very frequently on iTunes, 770 kilobit. Video bit rate, peak 30.84, average 29.4. That's, that's, a, that's a solid standard streaming bitrate for 4K video. And you'd be surprised that some discs actually go down to this level of bitrate. The gap in video quality between streaming and physical media and others, in some ways, for some content, continues to diminish. But this is pretty solid. We can see Apple's giving us 3840 by 1604. That means they're streaming just the main portion of the film there. They're not actually streaming the black bars. They're encoding the rest. And all in all, Pretty good result here, pretty indicative of iTunes. All right, so here we are, Movies Anywhere, and I had a similar experience with this as I did with other comparisons that I've done where Movies Anywhere, man, if you're using Movies Anywhere as your primary source of streaming content for quality, forget about it. You're doing it wrong. Go find another service. Use iTunes, something else. It just doesn't deliver quality. It jumps around. It doesn't lock. you got to jump ahead, jump back, stop playback, start it again in order to actually get the real resolution and bitrate that you're expecting to get crazy disappointing streaming shouldn't buffer and fail and, and do that anymore and indicating movies anywhere indicating like how much network bandwidth it's using it's almost using like nothing of my available network i've got a gigabit internet service here always speed test very high the bandwidth is there movies anywhere use it take it but in any case i finally got it to lock on to a 4k signal after after all of that finagling and what do we see? Well, QDH1, Dolby Vision HDR, EC3 with 16 channels uh, at 640 kilobits. So this is supposed to be Dolby Digital. It indicates the channel count right, and the, the bit rate's high, although uh, services, of course, like iTunes and others, tend to do Dolby Digital at 770, not 640, so there's a quality difference there. Still, the video bit rates, when you finally get them, are reasonable. 31.68 peak video, average 24 0.73. So not bad, but again, this is not a service that I would reliably use in any type of a high quality viewing environment uh, for movies or content. It's great for what it does in terms of porting movie rights around to different services, but as your actual movie player, forget about it. All right, so here we are, third, third service, Amazon Prime streaming. We're looking at QHVC codec, HDR10, not Dolby Vision compared to Movies Anywhere and iTunes. We are streaming at 4K, not encoding the black bars. The natural resolution excludes the black bars. QEC3 audio, 5.1 at a paltry 192 kilobit. No Atmos, no higher bit rate there. Video bit rates also low, 17.89 megabit per second. Video peak, 15.09 video. Average indicated bit rate. Bottom of the barrel, Amazon. Amazon Prime, historically speaking, is not the service also that you want to be watching streaming content in for high fidelity, high quality. I do believe that some of their more exclusive stuff uh, might have been upped or gotten better recently. I have watched The Boys and I was really impressed with that. This movie is, of course, a few years old, but I think it's still a good litmus test. And Amazon here, just, just, not, just not delivering. All right, here we go, last one, Disney Plus, looking at QHD1 video codec, Dolby Vision, EC3 16 channels, Dolby Atmos at 768 kilobit per second, on par there with iTunes, video bit rates 28.76, peak 
16.97 average. iTunes wins on this movie pretty handily. Disney Plus, I would say a fairly close second. Note, you do get the IMAX enhanced content though if you watch this movie on Disney Plus. So there you go, Disney Plus, a close second to iTunes across the board. Dolby Vision, 4K, Dolby Atmos, higher bit rates, not quite as high, but really close and all that. However, you do get the IMAX enhanced scenes here in Disney Plus that you're not getting on iTunes. You can see we're getting a more, more of a screen fill vertically than we would in the widescreen aspect ratio. On iTunes, we're getting a full indicated natural size 3840 by 2160 instead of uh, 1580, 1600-ish, which you would generally see in a scope presentation. So if you want to watch more picture information, of course, more, more vertical picture information, Disney Plus is the place for that. So there you go, Avengers Endgame. This movie does clock in over 100 gigabytes as a download on Kaleidoscape. It's like the pinnacle movie uh, representing possibility of Kaleidoscape quality. It was limited on physical release to a BD66, constrained a bit in size, you could argue, for a three-hour movie. Check out the channel for more of these types of comparison reviews, different streaming services, different formats on which to watch movies. If there's anything that you particularly want me to try to test and show off specific titles, let me know. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Do you stream? Are you disappointed by streaming quality? Hopefully this video is helpful to you. Give me some feedback. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel. Super thanks, merchandise, Amazon affiliate links. All that stuff is greatly, greatly appreciated. And come on back for more home theater discussion, reviews, and fun. Thanks so much.